What is up, YouTube? Back for another episode. Hope you're all having an amazing day. And man, it's finally time. I I don't even remember when I started working on this bumper, like January? <laughs> so I'm ready to get this thing knocked out, man. Finally. Check this out, man. You guys as I see what this thing looks like. I love that. How that looks without the bumper. Kind of like to rock it like that all the time, but I'd have to take out those fender liners because you can see where they're getting trashed. Uh, without that front bumper on there, whenever you turn the tires, uh, those little fender liners actually catch and they rub and it just eats the hell out of plastic. So anyways, so what I need to do here is I was just going to... Uh, wet sand this thing down because I heard that you can actually wet sand primer and get to the point where you can go ahead and you can wrap it uh, but there's a potential to have issues in the future because uh, primer is so porous there's a chance water could find its way down and underneath blah 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 all that good stuff or it could just you know eventually the vinyl might want to kind of peel up just because it's primer. It's just, it's like uh, you guys ever see somebody that uh, gets their vehicle all prepped and ready and gets it under primer and then just drives it like that forever and doesn't paint it because they just don't have a chance or whatever the case may be. And then you start seeing rust everywhere. That's because that's how porous primer is. Like it, it, it doesn't stop water and stuff from getting down through to to the bare metal temporarily it does but then it just starts to, to to break down and then that's when you start seeing rust and stuff so from what i understand the best way is to have clear coat on there because you want the, the most perfect smooth surface that's the whole key so i feel like to do the vinyl i don't want a clear coat i feel like just painting this thing uh, with some rust-oleum should be more than enough. It should be nice, super smooth. I think that'll be more enough. And the thing is, is uh, I was thinking about it, and honestly, I think if I could go back, I would have just painted everything that's black on the car, just painted it black and not clear-coated it. Uh, now, obviously, it's going to last a lot longer without fading, but... Like the bar in the back that I have has been in the sunlight for like four or five years now and still hasn't faded. So, and with that being, and another thing, another good point is that bar that I put on the front. I'm like, I figure it's going to take a massive amount of abuse and have all kinds of chips and stuff like that in there. And it's, I've heard rocks hitting off it like, ding, I'm like, holy crap. No rock chips, no nothing. Stuff to sticks to it smacks to it and and just wash it up a little bit and everything goes right off so that's paint is thick and can handle some abuse so that's why i was just thinking about uh should i not like this vinyl i'm gonna try it now if i don't like it or i just can't figure it out then uh then i'll probably just keep this just black without any clear coat just for simplicity Something happens and, oh man, a little rock chip. Go out there. Tss, tss. That easy, man. That easy. But I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best to do the vinyl and make it look as good as I can. And we'll go from there. So, what I need to do first is, I'm not sure how this works with like holes with the vinyl. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, all these little individual holes. So, I was just thinking, maybe just take like this little pin thing right there and uh once the vinyl's over top of it just like poke like a little hole where that would be kind of smooth it over and it should be okay but here's the biggest thing is a lot of these holes aren't quite big enough for the bolts that i have to go through them like i have to kind of like screw the actual bolt through not something you want to do when you've actually got vinyl over top of the thing the bolts need to slide through as easy as possible so i'm not like ripping the vinyl or 
pulling, potentially like pulling the vinyl, like get it through there and all of a sudden it kind of pulls the vinyl and pulls it up from here. So I don't want any of those kind of issues. So I'm going to go through the, all the holes where the lip down here mounts and then uh, where these things up here mount and just, just redrill the holes just bigger. So that's the last of my issues. Okay, all the holes are redrilled. As you can see, they're much bigger now. Test piece, see what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. Nice. Okay, so now I've got to sand this thing. Now, normally, I just uh, if I were just gonna paint it, I would wet sand this with like a uh, four, six, or six and eight. More than likely, four than six, and then paint it. But, since I'm not going to be clear coating, and since it's all going to be covered up, I'm actually going to do something different. I'm actually going to use 320. Now, they say that uh, most generally you wouldn't want to use 320 and then paint over top of it because you'll be able to see the scratches underneath. But... They also said that if you're going to use the paint that I'm using, which is acrylic enamel, so they said any acrylic enamel is literally so thick it'll cover up any scratches that 320 would leave. Definitely don't want to go below 320 because then you'll see the scratches. But again, this is going to be covered up with vinyl so you'll never even see it. You would see, now vinyl, you'll be able to see scratches the through vinyl, uh, they'd have to be some pretty major scratches, but you can see flaws through vinyl. Uh, but again, like, if the vinyl doesn't work, I still want the paint job to be amazing. So, just, if you guys are doing this exact same thing, don't go below 320. Like, that's, especially if you're using any other kind of spray paint. Uh, that, that, the enamel stuff is just super thick, and that's why I can get away with it. Now I'm also not getting like super aggressive or anything, just getting it nice and scuffed up, man. Just nice and scuffed up for the paint to have something to adhere to. You know, most people sand outside. <laughs> uh, those are just not most people, huh? Where's my landlord? Nothing going on in here, man. Just chilling. <laughs> Alrighty, bros. One of this thing about three good times. You notice how much lighter it looks now. That's crazy. That primer is super dark. So, now, the usual. Time to get this thing in the shower. Clean it up with some oxy. What? Uh oh, bros. It's not gonna cut it, man. Looks like I'm gonna have to take a trip to the dollar store and junk that. All right, I guess I'll be back in a minute. Peace. I'll show you guys what happens when you cruise without a bumper. This. <laughs> oh man, it's trashed. I just honestly, just need to cut that section out. See it started just a little bit over here, but it's really not that bad over here. For some reason, it's just the other side. Bam! Fresh bottle, bros. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and uh, get this thing in the shower and get it cleaned up, man. What up, bros? Fast forward a couple days. Uh, I'm ready to get this thing painted, man. Check it out. <laughs> My OG subscribers will remember this. They're the only ones that will remember this shirt. It's been a while. Uh, so. Let me go ahead and get this room transferred and turned into a paint booth. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Alrighty. So, everything's ready to go. So now I just need to break out some alcohol. Don't want to use 90. Definitely don't recommend anything over 70% alcohol. Reason being is that if you use anything over that uh, on primer or paint that you scuffed up, it'll strip it right off there or it'll just smear it and it'll just do way more damage than good 70 will just clean it but it won't actually affect the primer itself 
And of course we need some microfiber towels because I want to go over this thing really good to make sure it's super clean. Okay, so I went over the whole thing four times just because it's such a... Normally I just go over it twice, but I want to over it four times just to make sure it's perfectly clean, man. When I was sanding, man, that that primer comes off in like this kind of like real heavy like gray stuff. Well, you guys seen it, so I just want to make sure I got it perfect and yeah, every one of these, even down to the last one, has had so much stuff, so. All right. Let's break out. Let's see which one's nice, nice and full. All righty, let's get this thing shook up and ready to go, man. bros getting the place aired out first coat is on done looking amazing nice now you want to go super light with the first coat maybe a little blotchy in spots or kind of look like stripes but for the most part like I don't like I try to make sure everything's covered with the first coat but the key to going light is not necessarily just kind of tss, 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 you know what I mean it's holding the can back we're just getting it, just getting it. Because with this stuff I'm using, uh, acrylic enamel, it runs super easy. So even if you go light coats and you're super close, like you're gonna run. I ran into this problem many times. Now I only do, need to do two coats. And again, you don't have to be incredibly picky about your time in between as long as you do it within an hour. So as long as it's within an hour, doesn't matter. So uh, I think it's been like five minutes right now, so I'll give it another. I'll probably do it in 15 or 20 minutes, so. And again, there's no reason to go past two coats. This stuff is crazy thick, man. Also just realized on the back of the can, which I can't see not right now without my glasses, but it says on the back, uh, takes five to seven days for full adhesion to plastic. So I'm not gonna be able to do the vinyl till next weekend. So at least, at least the painting part will be done this weekend. It's time, bros. Been 15 minutes. So let me go in and uh, go ahead and put another coat on her, man. Now, on this coat, you want to go a little bit thicker. Like, don't go crazy. Again, keep the can a good ways away, but go a little thicker to make sure you get everything completely covered on this one. Okay, second coat is on and done. Uh, so, now, for those of you wanting to do the same thing, uh, here's a little advice, uh, something to remember. Now you're always going to get, like, whenever you're uh, using rattle can to do this, you're always going to get, like, an orange peelish kind of look. Now, obviously, you can get better with practice, and, uh, you know what I'm saying, like, get it to where it's not nowhere near as bad with the orange peel, but honestly, for the most part, you're always going to get orange peel with, with rattle can paint. It's just, it's just, it's just normal. It's just, it's hard to see because when it, if you put clear coat on top of it, it just shines so much that it's almost impossible to see. But if you ever notice, uh, like, uh, well, like on my car, on cloudy days when I go out and there's not that sun beating down, creating that crazy shininess, you can, if you look close and look just right, you can see the orange peel all through it. It's just hard to see. It's one of those things where you got to get down and really look, you know what I mean? But, uh. Yeah, again, you get the orange peel, don't worry about it. perfectly normal. Especially for right now, it doesn't matter at all because I'm vinyl wrapping this thing, so I'm not going for perfection. But again, this is the same way I would paint it even if I was going to clear coat it. So just a little heads up, so if you do this and you get worried, oh man, it looks like orange peel all over it. No, you're, you're good, man. That's normal for rattle can paint. Again, you can just get a little better with practice to where you can minimize it as much as possible. That being said, you guys know what time it is.
key important thing to remember. Uh, personally, if I was you guys, anytime you're going to paint something, if you can use a fluorescent type light, like a shop light, or even just a white light like that, and do your painting in it, it's gonna help you get so much better. And I say this because white lights or fluorescent type lights show all the flaws. So what I see in here is, oh, some orange peel here and there, whatever, take this thing out in the sunlight right now and you'd be like, what? I don't see any orange peel, it looks amazing. So that's the thing, if you can get it to look good in that style of light, it's going to look absolutely amazing outside. Which is another reason why I don't overreact sometimes when I come in here, I'm like, oh man, it's a, just like I know, you know. If it doesn't look that bad in here in that light, I know when I get outside, we're golden. Speaking of which, stay golden, my bros. <laughs> okay, so now I need to go ahead and just let that thing cure. Uh, I'll let it hang in there and cure for like 24 hours and then I'll actually take it down and then I'll just let it sit till next weekend where we're going to go ahead and wrap it. So hold on a second. Whew. Sorry, I had to get a drink. Bros, I don't know what it's like for you guys where you live. Holy shit, man. It's like a hundred here right now. Air conditioner's running nonstop. Oh my god, man. It's so hot you can't even breathe out there. But I figured before we go, it's only right to show you guys the new carbon fiber. So, as you know, this is the stuff I bought that has like a blue or gray kind of cast to it. So let's go out here by the car and show you guys a comparison again. It's actually a really good spot right there. See the comparison. See what I mean? It's got like that blue. See the carbon fiber is almost like a got like a gold color to it when you look at it just right in the light. This stuff's just like gray or bluish kind of terrible. Alrighty, bro. So I don't want to take the whole thing out of here yet. Uh, just want to keep it in here, keep it protected. But the amazing thing about this stuff. So obviously you got the backing that you take off, and then check this out. There's actually a layer on the front as well. So it's like three, see look, and you just peel that right off the front. It's just like a protective layer so that you can do your thing, you know what I mean? Get it all prepped and ready, get it on there, then you peel off the bottom, then you're ready for it, then you peel off the top, then you do your heat and all that kind of stuff. So it's just while you're getting it prepped and ready and on there, you don't tear it up. That's actually amazing. So now let's get this out to the car and see what it looks like. All right, so you can see the huge difference in this stuff right here. Oh my god, look how much better that stuff looks. Yeah, so the only thing I see the difference is that if you look at these right here, they're just a little bit bigger. Those little dot type things, the weave. These are just a little bit smaller, but other than that, man, that's pretty, that's amazing. Pretty spot on. Even when you peel back. Yeah, look at that. Oh my god, it's gonna look amazing, bros. That looks perfect. That looks perfect. So now I want to actually show you guys with these side-by-side -side comparison, and really it almost comes down to glossiness. So if this would have had more of a gloss to it, it may have kind of hid that grayish texture to it, but yeah, I'm pumped. This is gonna look amazing. Okay, so because of the five to seven day wait, I'm gonna have to wait till next weekend to actually wrap this thing. Uh, so this is gonna be a two-part thing. This will just be basically how to prep the bumper and get it ready for vinyl. Uh, my way, obviously, because uh, they say it's best to clear coat it so you have that perfectly smooth finish, but I think it's gonna work out just fine, man. I think it's gonna work out just fine. We'll find out if I have any lifting issues or anything, because that's the whole thing, is if it's not prepped perfectly, it will stick, but within a couple weeks, you'll have lifting issues. In other words, it'll start lifting up like that, so. We'll see, man. So with that being said, man, if you guys like the video, make sure you smash that thumbs up. If you guys are new to the channel, see some more content, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys hit the bell notification to be notified with my newest content and uh, hmm.